Is this on? It says on. It says on. So working here. Working there. Okay. Uh, so one of the again one of the reasons that I'm standing here in front of you is because uh, these guys asked us to help explain some of the mechanical stuff, uh, and so we're gonna start really big with understanding things and you may have heard this stuff before but we're going to start really wide and then we're going to work our way down to dbs okay so this morning i'm going to just talk quickly about the university and and ywam and how that fits together and then how you are a part of all of that okay so we're all a part of this so this is really important for us to understand on many many reasons many levels many reasons for this but mainly because my understanding is right now this DBS is going to be the core Bible school for all the two-year AA degree tracks, associates, uh, is what AA stands for, Associates of Arts, uh, degree tracks for all of the university uh, here in Kona. And so significantly it's important for you to understand how the university fits in to everything that we're doing because this is a very significant historical time period. Uh, in this this campus and in specifically in this school. So um, first, you it's it's going to be looking more like a here's DBS here, and then there's all these. It's like a target, right? And all of this is part of YWAM. Okay, so YWAM, you know, founded a long time ago. The guy who founded it, he lives here. If you haven't met him, you should check him out. His name's Lauren. He's a pretty cool guy. Um, I'm sure most of you know him. I still am like, there's Lauren. This is awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, because of the foundation of YWAM didn't initially start to be out, started to be a university, um, the word of the Lord came. Uh, to them to start a university and that's significant because there are already universities all over the world right and so it's significant that YWAM also has the calling to be a university because we are a missions training and sending organization uh, the fact that university level or university skill set level uh, is has been the word of the Lord to us is very significant in how we do all of our programs so the entry level or the 101 for the university is DTS everybody knows that um, and then there are second level schools and within the second level schools there are core element courses okay and this is significant because these are the three schools that when when the word of the Lord came for us to be a university, these are the three essential with the with DTS. These are the three essential things for any student that they should have after university. These are the core curriculum courses, and that's a Bible course, a worldview course, and a communication. And those were considered the core things. So if you look at DBS, we are under those core curriculum. Yeah, and that is under the College of Christian Ministries. And that is under the U of N. And all of these things inform how we do our DBS. Okay, so for example, with YWAM, we have foundational values, right? You guys know the foundational values? Okay, somebody name one, just one. Communicate with integrity. Communicate with integrity, know God. Make him known, relationship oriented, hospitality. hospitality. Okay, all those things you see, we, we labor on those because those inform everything we do as a mission, right? So underneath the umbrella, those values inform that. Do you know of any other documents that inform everything as well? What are some other key YOM documents? Magna Carta. The Magna Carta, the Christian Magna Carta, okay? So YWAM got together, I think it was 1988, and they wrote down what every Christian 
should be have access to. So they should have access to, to water, health care. They should have access to a church nearby. They should have access to Christian education for their kids. This will be in your manuals, your staff manuals. But these things inform how we do everything, right? So why do we have a school for kids here? Because the Christian Magna Carta says, this community of Kona should have a place where all students can come and get Christian education. Yeah, so those things inform what we do. Okay, any other documents? YWAM documents you guys know of? It's kind of tricky, but... The Jubilee, the Jubilee Covenant. Who was here for the 50th anniversary of YWAM? Yeah, okay, all four, four of us. Okay, there's a, <laughs> there was a covenant that was made that helped us to continue looking forward for the next 50 years or more uh, that keep, keeps us in line, that talks about how we are going, what we're going to do and how we're going to do that. If you haven't seen that, go look it up. I won't do it for you. Uh, I will never do anything. Here's a model something for you. I'll never do anything that you can do for yourself. Okay, because you guys are, you're capable. You're smart. You're grown-ups. You don't need me to do it for you. You guys can go figure out how to find the, the 50th Jubilee. So go find that because it's important. It informs these things. Good. Any others you can think of? Come on, long-term YWAMers. Help me out. Yo, what do you got? The Manila Covenant? Yep. Oh, that's an old one. That's an old one. Okay, tell me about the Manila Covenant. That they came together to decide on um, the common things that, that, they would, that we would function under? Yep, yep, okay, you guys can look that up. These are also in your staff manual. So the point is, is that there are many other documents, and we've included a few others, that inform all these things, and that's why we included them, not because they're stuff that you'd be nice to read um, but then they're really significant in all of this and one another one of the documents that's key for the U of N is why we operate like we operate it's called the prophetic elements of the U of N um, and that's also in your manual and what's key is that this is something that was put together by Howard Malmstadt you guys may have heard him he's helped us design the university also uh, Tom Bloomer and those guys they all got together and looked at what makes the U of N different than any other college okay and or any other university there's three things that the U of N does uh, that is slightly different so there it's like a tripod and you have to have all of them one is skills The other is knowledge. And the other is character. And those are the three prongs that we stand on as a university, okay? So you can go and get knowledge pretty much anywhere at any other university. And that's pretty much what you're going to get. They don't care about your character, per se, and they don't really care about the skills that you come out with. Not necessarily, unless you're like being trained as a teacher and then they, they kind of get you to do some practicals, but they don't really, they're not heavy on skills. It's mostly the theory of teaching and things like that, okay? So if you're, unless you're in a very skilled, technically skilled job or going in that field, mostly you're only going to be getting the knowledge base or the theory base for that okay but when god spoke to us as a university significantly he was very concerned with our character and also with what we are going to be equipped with yeah how are we going to reach the nations right what skills like through illustration or through um health care or through education right we're training people to actually work with people I know it's crazy, but we've moved away from that model in most nations in higher education. But this is the word of the Lord for us, as well as character. We really want people to come out of our training programs with an excellent character, yeah, which is unique. Uh, most places don't deal with that, that aspect. And, and so we're not measuring people's character, but we're looking, you can't ever measure someone's character. What you're really looking for is the attitude with which you do things. 
Yeah, and that will be something that's significant. So when looking at the DBS, we thought, how are we going to do that with these three things? How are we going to inform yeah, our students with both skills, knowledge, and character? Okay, and then we're also under the College of Christian Ministries. Did you want... That's Sorry, just practically used. Thanks. I thought you had something you wanted to contribute. Oh, no. I yeah. <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking if I was watching this. It'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Right. No, that's good. Okay, we're also under the College of Christian Ministries. Okay, so that's all Bible courses. Um, that's quite a few, actually, but I don't know them all. But you guys can look that up in the U of N catalog. <laughs> But there's the College of Christian Ministries, and that's a the gen, generic. It's a generic college, so uh, that that gives us our covering. So the dean of the College of Christian Ministries is anybody know? He's here on campus, Danny Layman. Yeah, he's our dean. And what he does is a lot of logistical roles. He covers it spiritually. He holds the gate for what the standard is for things as well. Um, and so we we. We're, we're very blessed to have Danny here with us. Um, and then underneath that is the core curriculum or Center for Core Curriculum. And there, those three courses, so if, if those are the core elements that are so important for us to have in our university, then there needs to be things that govern those. So for example, in every core Bible course, so that would be the, uh, there's an FBS, there's the... DBS now, there's the BCC, there's a, what's the BSN, Bible School for the Nations, um, there's a whole bunch more. School of the Bible, but no that's the shortened one, BSN. Um, any shortened core curriculum uh, course has certain regulations that they must meet. One of them being reading the Bible all the way through. Okay, right? If this is the core thing for the university, then one of the core things for the Bible training is that you would read the whole book, the whole Bible. Okay, secondly, uh, that you would carry on in discipleship. Yeah, that's so key. So you guys, Discipleship Bible School, falling right in line with that. All of these core Bible courses were meant to follow on from DTS. Okay, so these guys have lined up this course in conjunction with that. Okay, also... Um, you need to be able to be uh, proficient in the inductive study approach or, a, or study methods. So one or more study methods. That's a core curriculum standard. Uh, you need to be equipping people with the character of God. So the character of a Bible student. We, it's, it's in there. It's super important that your character matches up what you're learning in the Bible. Cause could you imagine if we were a university that was training Bible students who had bad attitudes? <laughs> Yeah, what kind of university would we be? Um, yeah, don't go there. Those guys' character. Right? So those are all really key things that inform the DBS. And then the DBS, we asked, okay, what are the core elements that make DBS unique and that contributes to all of this? Right? What are the core things that contribute to the mission, to the goal of knowing God and making God known? Uh, are that align with all the values that are uniquely DBS. And some of those things that, as we were working with these guys, the community learning aspect, okay, the emphasis on the community and building community, that's a key, core, unique thing that maybe the other schools, of course you want community, but DBS builds, focuses and directly builds community. Okay, that's key for this course. Uh, secondly, the small group aspect, the way small groups are done, how the community is built through small group, and th those key, that's a key hub element of DBS. Uh, of course, lots of places have small groups and stuff like that. Other schools will have small groups, but sm small group is one of the core elements that makes DBS unique as far as the way we train people, how to run small groups, and the outcome of being small groups, okay? So when we looked at DBS with these guys, we're asking all those questions. How do we fit in the vision of YWAM? How do we, how do we give that away? And how do we actually line up values and principles everything within the DBS and this is where we're aiming for but all these things need to be in line 
right? And so everything that we do will, of course, be reflecting the foundational values, of course, be fulfilling the Magna Carta, of course, be uh, honoring the 50th Jubilee. It'll also be honoring our college. It'll be honoring the core curriculum, and it will be honoring uh, to one another when we, when we do those core elements of small group, community, ongoing discipleship, and things like that, yeah? So a lot of the elements that are, that are um, helped, that's what's helped guide and focus uh, the reforming or the uh, sort of what you guys are going to be experiencing as new DBS. It was always there. It just wasn't, um, it wasn't brought to the forefront. The, and so these guys have worked really hard to clarify those things and to clarify how we reach those goals. And that's one of the things that we're going to be looking at. Because of these three aspects, uh, then we broke the school down that way. Yeah? So this is where, this is how character will look. This is where skills will look. And this is where the knowledge. And then we, we helped these guys organize it so that they know when does, when does knowledge, sh when should that be communicated? Um, and if it's not communicated there, where should it be communicated elsewhere? Like, maybe if it's not communicated in the classroom, let's do it in the small group. And if it's not there, then the one-on-one. -on -one. We'll pick that up, right? So, so that we can actually hit our target. Uh, we, we tried to figure out all these parameters and clarify and write these things down so that it was clear, so that we can, we can hit our target and also match up with all the values of the university. So that's, that's essentially how this came about was looking at all these things and it's an alignment thing, right? It's an alignment. Uh, there's often, let's keep in alignment with the Word of God. Well, all these things are the Word of the Lord. Yeah? All these things are the Word of the Lord. And in the DBS, then they're going to influence all these things and all the spheres. Yeah? So once, we, if we line up with all this and we, we, we do the core things that are that are DBS, what's going to happen is, boom, it's just going to go crazy and nuts, like, because the word of the Lord is being fulfilled, and then nations are going to be discipled, and then things are going to happen, and our students are going to be changed, and not that that wasn't happening, but now we've narrowed it and focused it, so that actually the, the fullness of what God had intended for all this can just blow up, and so I'm so excited. Uh, that we, we get to do that. But this is how those things are informed. So now there's a reason for everything. Okay, there, it was thought through, there's a reason. Why do we do it this way? Uh, why did we choose these things? There are values and principles and words of the Lord that guide all of that. Okay, so if you're ever sitting here and you're like, I don't understand. Why are we doing it this way and not the way we did it last time? Ask the question. Because if there's a value there's a word of the Lord, there's a guideline, there's a principle, there's a reason, because it, it'll fit into some of these things. There's a reason for it all, okay? And so we want you to be equipped with understanding why. Why is it like this? How do we come to that conclusion? Where did we get this information from? Um, who, whose word of the Lord was it, right? Is it, was it to yo? specifically for the DBS, or is this a YWAM word of the Lord, or was this part of the university aspect, okay? And so the reason I'm saying all of this stuff is so that you know there's a reason. We went back to the word of the Lord over and over again. These guys, we pulled out what God was saying out of all of them and, and really lined this up. And so that's why I'm telling you all this, not because you didn't know that, but you maybe didn't know how they all fit together and this, was, this is where we got. So if you're like, I don't get it, um, ask the question. Because there, there's, a good, there's a good chance there's a really great reason and a value and a principle. And that's what we want to operate out of. We want to operate out of values. Right? And that's the whole point of lining up with values. Because once we own the values, then it doesn't have to look the same. Right? Because the value is the same. So as the value is expressed in your unique way, this DBS could now become... We could have Awakening DBS, we could have Fire and Fragrancy, we could have Music DBS, we could have any of those DBSs um, because the core elements, everybody knows the value, the core of those things. And so then it can be expressed in many different ways, right? And so that was part of this process as well, is to really nail those things down 
Uh, any questions about that specific these specific elements and how that works and fits together? We'll show you way more of what that means and what that looks like. But this was where we started with this process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just think that it would be good. Like it's good to ask mm. because hey, maybe we missed actually missed something too. Like, yeah. Because we just went through all of this. If we're doing something and you're not sure, like it's actually really helpful for you to actually ask so that we can decide, oh, did we see that before? Did we miss it? Do we want that to align in this way? Are we doing yep. this, the, you know, in correlation to all of these things? Um, yes, yes. And because we're doing things a little bit differently in this time, you guys are actually- Yeah, helping us think it through. Yep. Of filtering through to see how it goes and see what, what, yep. what really works and how things happen. And do you know what I mean? Like. Um, and so you're actually, it's really important to get feedback from you and for you to ask questions and to share that kind of stuff. So, yep, so you said that, it, that we're all in this together and it's really important for you guys to ask questions and give feedback and comments because this is, is it was a forming process. And, and so we, we tried to do a lot of the groundwork, but you guys are the ones who are gonna be teaching us whether or not it works, yeah? And whether or not it lines up with all these things. So that's where your, your guys are coming in and we need all of that because yeah, it's not new, but it's new. So that's where you guys come in and making sure that all these things are actually happening. And that's why I'm trying to explain this so that you can make sure that you know, so that you can help us too make sure that it's fully encompassing all those things and it's actually working as well because we want to line up with what God says because we see that the impact will happen from there. And you emphasize the importance of the small group and reading mm. the whole Bible. Mm. And when you think about the normal former DBS some the schedule, <laughs> the we have uh, the the lecture phase mm -mm. and in the afternoon there is a small group mm -hmm. with the reading mm -hmm. and there is a homework personal mm -hmm. but when we think about the small groups the important mm -hmm. why don't you set up the uh, lecture phase mm -hmm. with a small group we did oh, we have now oh you have we'll so there. that's the what i have idea yeah, good idea yeah yeah no that's right yeah. and that's yeah. So his suggestion was that if small group is one of the key elements, then shouldn't we form the course around the small groups? And we, we did we did to our best ability at this point to see if we could do that and integrate that stuff. And then we just are gonna have to try to see how that works. Um, uh, in a school setting, again, there's not only one model. So just because it's done like this here, that should meet the needs of the students coming to this location. But it might look a little bit different, right, in another location. And so to keep that in mind as well. Um, but we did incorporate more trying to build around the small group because you're right. It is the, it's the key, right? Um, and so we're going to try it and see how it works and then um, very much wanting to try it the first week and get feedback like is this working uh, how do you guys feel like is going do you know what I mean but um, we want to cover all of what our goals are so you guys can actually give the feedback of whether we are meeting the goals that we're wanting to meet yeah, yeah. so with that then like um, we adjusted we just did a lot of the way that small group will be run and we'll explain all that too, probably starting this afternoon. We're just looking at what we did is we wrote down some objectives and maybe I can go into those objectives now. Does that sound good? Do you want me to, sh like the core? Do you have the manuals, Handy? I can go see if they... Oh, they weren't quite done yet. Well, they might be done now. Yeah, they're both yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's true, then you could see it. We outline, can you explain? We yep. outlined all that in a staff manual so that it's you have it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, because there is a lot of responsibility put on a staff as 
a small group leader, if everything is if, if everything is kind of built around that, then there's lots of responsibility. Uh, and part of um, our re-looking at things is does the staff have enough of these tools and information to actually do that well. So that's also why we want to do staff training, so we can make sure everyone's on the same page. Yeah. And then you all feel safe yeah. <laughs> and equipped yeah. and strengthened in moving into the DBS because the whole point is not just to give you a bunch of information uh, the point is to equip and to strengthen what is already there you guys already understand DBS you know some of the heart of this and you understand uh, where we're going but we want we wanted to make the steps really clear we wanted to make uh, the objectives really clear we wanted to make the skills really clear and the knowledge really clear so that it's not so that you don't get in a small group and be like what am I supposed to talk about well we kind of we looked at how do we meet the objectives over this week and then we put some of the objectives down so that you guys can see oh if we haven't covered this in lectures that's where we need to cover it in small group mm -hmm. yeah and if we haven't done that then we need to talk to the staff hey guys we, we're missing this element this really key thing uh, and we're not getting it in our and we didn't have time for it in our small group so we need to figure out another way to cover it so what happened is, is we asked everybody in lots of conversations we brought a whole bunch of people in we brought like Leah in and former students and we've been talking and asking okay what were your experiences what were some of the challenges what were some of the things that you loved um, what were some of the things that worked really well uh, what 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 areas need strengthening um, and what we did is we clarified everything into uh, like E A B C D E six goals that's basically it just six goals to move in that direction and those six goals are real simple things like being able to know and study the Bible that's the first goal right and then we we listed some things and, and the in the manual they'll show you how that works um, like be be trained in, in your character right how do we assess character how do we look at that and so those things are listed out for us as well so that we know where we're going with that and then um, what are the other ones oh th contributing c to community right like how do what are we gonna look at if we want to build community how do we build community like what are some of the key things that are essential otherwise community doesn't work right uh, overview of the yeah uh, the overview of the Bible okay so we created an element for that because that was key to that so God's redemptive plan and um, having an overview of the different eras of the time period for this course so we just clarified all those things and wrote them down so that they're really clear and simple hopefully simple uh, for you guys to be able to have and feel strengthened and equipped and so again that's the goal of staff training is not not to give a bunch of information but to really equip you and so in these first few days we're just going to give a lot of this background knowledge of like where how this all came about and put together and then we're actually going to practice okay so next week that's what we're doing we're practicing together because it's not about um, like you need to know the information but you also need to practice it so that you feel strengthened and equipped and understand this because it's now small group model then how do we actually do small groups differently than we did before because it is slightly different because there's Bible reading which is actually input and then there's the the, the small group uh, so that's part of small group but then there's the part of small group where's the discussion the community the um, moving to principles and things like that that we was lacking a little bit as we heard there was not much time for discussion or the pressure uh, was to read and not necessarily actually do and so we tried to adjust some of that in different ways and we'll eventually show and get there show you how that works and where we came to those things and these guys uh, spent hours discussing and looking at what principles would be effective where is this line up with all of those things for the DBS and so that's yeah that's why we're looking at that together yeah any questions on is that helpful is that clear yeah so in this manual there's a lot of wonderful things can I borrow one of those please I just want to show you what's inside of it so that you know where things are. Um, 
So the first page is these things, curriculum and outcomes, okay? So one of the first words I want to introduce you to is the word outcome. Outcome. Okay, what, what, anybody know what an outcome is? A result of something, yeah. Any? Fruit, yes. How can we measure the fruit if we don't know where we're going, okay? So what we, when we ask these guys, what, where did they, where did they want their students to end up? What did we want them to be able to know? What do we want the DBS students to be able to do, right? That's where we made these things called an outcome. So it's the fruit. What are the students, what will they be able to know? What will their character look like? And what will they be able to do by the end of the course? Yeah, and so that's where these outcomes came from. We just asked, what do you want them to be able to do? What do you want them to know? What do you want them to be like as a character? And so that's where these, these curriculums and these outcomes came from. So you can see week one, these are the weekly, there's an there's a explanation that's the same from the website from before. Uh, and then there's the outcomes. This is what the students will be able to do. So these words, action words, right? Students have read. They read. That's an action word. That's what they do, right? They've read that. They can identify historical narrative as the genre for the first week, okay? So you can see the word identify. So these are action. They can begin to recognize and identify different worldviews. So that's in line with worldview and origin. Okay, and so you can see there's a list of, of what the students ideally by the end of week one will be able to do or at least begin doing. And then this is how that's gonna happen. This is where it's covered. So these things will be covered in lectures. These things will be covered in small groups. This stuff will be covered in homework. Okay, so that it should be clear. Week one, all these outcomes, this is where they're covered. And if we miss one, that's where we need your help to find out. Okay? And then that's just how it goes through every week like that so that it's clear what needs to be done in each week. Okay, if you flip to the back of that, then there's the Bible reading schedule. Keep going to the end of, end of this document with the outcomes. It's, there's a lot because we wrote everything down for all the 12 weeks. So then you have the Bible reading schedule, which is organized by month. You might have got it twice. We got it in there twice, just in case you, <laughs> in case you didn't see it the first time. Okay, and then there's a document that's called assessment, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on, tomorrow. Um, but that's how do we look at knowledge, skills, and the character, the personal development of the individuals, and why do we do that, and how do we do that, and we'll talk about that later. And then there's another page for different kinds of questions, because one of the things we want, small group, we want to equip the students to be able to lead a small group by the end, and they're going to practice, starting in week 9, 10, and 11, they're going to be leading your small groups. So everybody will get a chance at least twice to lead a small group because that's what we want everybody to be able to do by the time we're done. And so in order to do that, we have to teach them how to ask questions. Okay, and you guys are gonna, you know that facilitating a small group means that you have to ask questions. So we have to train the students how to ask questions so that they can learn how to do that when it's their, when it's their, their turn, yeah? Oh, so that's what that's for. Um, then there's the, the homework list, that, and that's, again, meeting all of the outcomes. And then here's your grading sheet, and then introduction to inductive Bible study, which if you're not familiar with, would be good to just give a little refresh, but most everybody should. And then here's all these awesome documents that we were talking about. Here's your Magna Carta. Here's your Manila Covenant. And here's the prophetic element of the U of N. These would be really great to, to read. So like if you're looking at 
the uniqueness of the U of N here, the prophetic element of the U of N. These are a lot of the things that we worked with. So right, all trainees must do a DTS. Check. The university was established as a result of obedience of the Lord. We talked about that. Training is inclusive. Yeah, uh, YWAM training is success-based, which is what we've really done with this school, is line it up so that the students are able to succeed. Yeah, we know what their outcomes are. And if we know where we're going, we, we, can, we can make our way there. Yeah, we can actually hit the target. Where are we going? That's where the outcomes come in. Uh, training should be transformational, not transactional. We totally want transformation in our small groups, in our students, in our classroom, in every area. Fusion of non-formal and formal. And I'll explain how that looks real quick. So there are three types of, of training, you guys, and I know you know this. What kind of training are we in now where this is formal? Okay, I'm standing up here, I'm giving you information, um, and you're receiving that. This is a formal setting, okay? But there's non-formal. So this morning when we were talking with each other in the group, that's a non-formal time where it's, it's not, it's structured, but, and there's a goal, but it's not, I'm not standing giving, like it's not lecture content type style. So that's called non-formal, okay? And then there's informal, which is when we're just hanging out. Okay, and your job as a staff, and our job, everybody's job as staff of this school, is to make sure that we help train our students in all three of those areas. Formal, non-formal, and informal. Because when they're not with us, who's training them informally? Is it YouTube? Is it Lady Gaga? I mean, like, really, who's training them? Okay, because they will be influenced outside of, our, outside of our time together. So who is training them? Um, that's what our role as staff is to help in all three of those areas. Teaching should be put into practice, taking the message to every human being. And then every school is an integral part of worshiping, learning, working, interceding in an outreaching community. And all those things we looked at when creating this course. How do we do that? How do we hit those goals? Well, we created outcomes that help hit those goals. Okay. There's some questions there. Then a really great important thing is how long does it take to read the Bible? If you're a small group leader, it's so important to know how long your book takes so that you can manage your time as a leader in your small group. So we put those in there for you. These came out of the YWAM 50th Bible, right? So this is oral, general, a general reading time, a good guideline. Uh, reading in community. And we'll cover some of this stuff later. Later, um, How to read in community, what, reading in small groups, how we're going to do this. Um, but specifically, we want our reading to not just be reading for reading's sake, so that we can check these students read these things. Check, check, check. Now, what we're doing is we're reflectively reading, right? That's part of what makes DBS. Um, DBS is that we're reading in these small groups. We're thinking about what is being said. We're thinking about how the author is working with the text. We're looking at, we're going to be pulling in the historical stuff, and then we're going to be talking about it in our small groups. And so it's important that the reading um, in the small groups is deliberate. Yeah? It's deliberately done, not just for reading's sake, but for reflection. And so there's different ways of reading, believe it or not. How many of you guys read for fun? Read for fun? Yeah, most people read for fun. Good. Okay, that's a totally different skill than analytically reading. Right? Reading for learning. Very different. And so what we want to try and help people, everybody can read, but can they read as a skill to learn? And that's where you guys will be pulling in a lot of that, looking at the um, main idea. Okay, that's a skill. Not, not, I, when I read my Harry Potter books, I'm not looking for the main idea of that chapter. Okay? But when I'm reading the Bible, I want to be looking for that. So there's skill level training that we're going to be helping the students learn how to do. How do they figure out the main idea? Yeah? How can they engage with God and understanding His, his, his uh, character and nature? Well, how can they see that if they haven't observed? Right, and so we're going to be teaching them to move through observation, interpretation, application as we read. And we're going to hopefully structure the week so that they move through that naturally. Does that make sense? 
Um, because it was so core, um, we wanted to write about that and make sure that it was in here. Um, please read this stuff and give us your feedback, okay? Uh, we spent weeks trying to communicate the heart of these things in paper, but we want to make sure that it really does do that. And so read, give us feedback. Um, these guys, uh, yeah, are like, please, please, please give us feedback and make sure that it's consistent, make sure that's clear. Um, because if the values are not coming out here, then um, they need to come through us. And so we also want to write them down so we can pass that on. Yeah, it's important to keep it written down. Okay, and then we got uh, some resources in the back here. Um, just some thoughts on how to use books. That's another thing we're going to be doing is teaching uh, everybody how to use some of these books to help them with their analytical reading or their critical thinking. And then uh, there's a little bit about staff roles, which came out of uh, the UVN stuff, which I think Andrew and those guys will talk about later on. And then a general schedule for this week. So there's your schedule. What are we covering this week? That's all in here too. This week and next week. Don't look at the back page. Don't look at the back page. <laughs> back page is, that was supposed to at some point. Yeah, I don't know how got in there. Some point this will be organized, so this will be a general schedule of what the, like ideally what a week. We're not doing anything. We're not doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> We're having staff meeting on Wednesday though, just that's, that's not actually true either. Yeah, you're getting fed. Um, but yeah, so there's, um, that'll be adjusted and there'll be a general template for the week. And then here's also the vision for the DBS by your very own Jovan Bakul. Uh, to continue to, to understand the heart of why are we doing this? Why is this important? Uh, where did this come from? Okay, so those are all important things. More small group stuff. Why do we have small groups? Those, that's where we came up with these things, right? Why, do, why is this? Well, this small group is essential to DBS. So that's why it's in here. And what are the benefits of learning in a small group? I mean, I really think you guys, like, how many of you guys loved studying the Bible before you took a Bible course? Like two of us, right? I was like, get away from me. Like, I don't want to. That's too hard. I don't understand it. I don't get it. It's in the too hard box, right? Um, but if I had a group of people or a community of people that wanted to learn around me and that I could learn with, count me in, right? I could do that all day long, every day of the week. And so the fact that people are signing up to study with each other that's so helpful we want to equip them to be able to do that with each other and so we're going to be modeling that we're going to be modeling how to actually learn with each other um, and so that's exciting and here's facilitation and some boundaries and confidentiality and blah 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 and then YWAM statement of purpose kind of important again lining up making sure everything lines up with that and our foundational values. Yay. Yeah, they're in here. Okay, so these are all, it seems like a really thick packet, but it's the key of everything DBS. We're trying to put it together in a manual, and obviously it's a bit rough, um, but it's come out of many hours of prayer and thought and trying to organize so that it's written down for everyone, so that it's clear, okay? So let me show you how those outcomes, where they came from. No? Wrap it up. What time is it? 11.25. 11.25. Okay. If you want to explain the outcomes, sure. Yeah, just really quick. Okay, so here's the, the core things, like I said. F. The first one is their Bible knowledge. Is this what you're wanting? Yeah? Okay. They're not in there exactly like that. This is the biblical narrative. You will see these in another document. There's another document that has all this stuff in it, and you will get one of those too. So don't worry. It's just not in here because it's, we didn't want to make it too big, and it's not necessary for it to be in this document, 
we have another document that you can use. Okay, so this is developing Bible knowledge. Okay, we use the word developing for this one because people have Bible knowledge coming into the class and you're not going to give them everything they need to know by the end of DBS. It's just not possible, so therefore we're developing their Bible knowledge. Okay, this one is discovering God in the biblical narrative. Okay, this is where the overview, God's redemptive plan, this is where the each biblical era, those all come into play here. Then the, another core element is facilitation of small groups. So the students will have things that they must do for each one of these. Yep, but they're going to be able to do that. So their Bible knowledge will be developed. Their uh, understanding of the biblical narrative will be discovered. They'll discover that. Okay, they're going to learn how to facilitate a small group. Okay, that's part of the things we want. That's core to DBS. Yep, they're going to contribute to the formation of community. Okay, so that's one of the things we want to see. Are they contributing by the end? Are they contributing to community? Right, so these are our goals. This is where we want to go. These are the core things for DBS. They're forming community or contributing to the ongoing formation of community. They're incorporating um, prayer and worship. Yep, so that's, again, that's part of every course within, the y, within YWAM, within the U of N, right? We have those elements that we really want people to be, be engaged in. Prayer, worship, yeah? Intercession, uh, spiritual warfare. That's all included in this. So this is a key for every YWAM course. Every YWAM course would have this thing in it. As well as every Bible core, uh, curriculum course. So one of the three will we'll always have this okay and some of this not all of it but some of it okay and but these this is DBS specific right these are DBS specific these are part of the bigger picture but these are definitely DBS and then this is another one that every school will have in it which is our Christian values and character Okay, and so that's, these are the core things. This is it. This is where we're headed for DBS. And so when we ask these guys, and remember our, our circles, Bible knowledge, that, that's informed from our college and from the core curriculum. Biblical narrative, that's partially DBS, partially informed from those, those other, the college and, and that uh, core curriculum. Facilitation of small group, unique. To DBS. This is what makes DBS unique. Uh, forming a community, contributing to community, part of the uniqueness of DBS. Even though all other schools will do that, they're not necessarily going to assess specifically that aspect. Does that make sense? So this is why this is core to DBS. And incorporation, prayer, and worship, every school in YWAM should have these elements. That's part of our that's part of our university standards, yeah? And Christian values and character, again, you know that because we saw that those are the three things that they really have in there, right? Character, we, uh, every school will assess character. Okay, and so that's how these things came together. This is what is a DBS. So if you're saying, what is DBS? This is a DBS. And we'll have specific things that show you how you know if somebody is going in that direction. Okay, and the point is to get everybody to be able to do all these things. Okay, and that doesn't mean that they have to do them like what we're teaching someone to do is skill. Okay, so we're teaching them how to do these things, but, but we're not necessarily wanting them to 
uh, be an expert by the end. We want them to be proficient. Okay, so think of it like this. DBS is like learning how to ride a bicycle. Okay, and so what you're going to do is you're going to teach some people know how to ride a bicycle already. And so you're going to advance their skills. Okay, some people have never ridden, but they've never even seen a bicycle. Right, so you've got to start with, this is a handlebar. Yeah, these are wheels. This is pedals that makes it go. Right, I mean, very basic. Okay, so what we're trying to do is move students from wherever they are to a proficiency in these skills. Okay, even if they have some of the skills, we're going to move them forward with their skills. Okay, so everybody is going to the same place, right? This is our goal. Everyone will go there. Some people will go like this. Some people will go like this. Some people will start here and go. Okay? And so that's our goal. And that's why we created these is so that we know when we get there. We know how we can get people there. We know what we need to take them there. And that's, that's how that worked. Okay? Cool? Okay, Anna. I just, um, I just want to clarify, just to kind of, um, this is, seems like a lot of information in a big packet, um, but we actually need you to actually read those things. Okay, now I'm not saying you don't know those things. I'm saying that we want to remember and look at them again to refresh our memories. So I know you've seen the Foundation of Values and read them maybe 502 times. Get it? I've been in YWAM for 13, 14 years now. I'm going to go home and read them too. Okay, so let's just get ourselves all on the same page. I, I would like you to actually read through the foundational values again. Think about that. These, remember, these are the values that we are living by. These are the values that we are modeling. These are the values that we are showing, right? And so thinking about it in that way, same with the Magna Carta. It's not up here anymore. But um, the prophetic word to the university, you are part of the University of the Nations. You are representing the University of the Nations. You are equipping people through uh, under the banner of the University of the Nations. And so let's just recap, re-look at that again just for ourselves personally. And um, so if you can read those pages tonight or today or but by tomorrow, um, that would be excellent. Um, I also would like you to read through uh, the, the curriculum, that page with the, uh, the first two, I think, maybe, curriculum and outcomes, because as we get into tomorrow, we're going to look at how to assess the students, and we're going to start looking into some of those technical things. But um, we put that together so that you had a big picture of the school. So if you've read that, then you can practically think, how am I going to assess that? How am I going to make sure those students are able to do those things? Well, then I need, we need you to come have already read and understand what we're looking at. Does that make sense? So that's for prep for tomorrow. So get yourself on the page with YWAM again, just remembering. Um, and then um, definitely those outcomes and the last thing, the outcomes and the assessment page. Yeah. Because we are going to talk about assessments. Um, and we need everyone to understand what is an assessment and why are we assessing. And that again comes into alignment under the university and how God has called us as a university to actually train people, assess them, and what are we looking for. And how do we assess people's character? Because um, we're not called to judge people, we're called to help them grow. Do you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. And so it's helpful just to read that stuff again. Um, so I just wanted to clarify, yeah. if we can read those specific things within this packet tonight, super awesome, it'd be really helpful. This afternoon we're gonna come back and we'll highlight some of those different things. We're gonna talk about like, staff role, like what's that look like, what's my responsibilities, stuff like that, just so that we're all on the same page again, yeah? Okay, that's all, yeah. thanks. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Um